Hello everybody. For today's episode, I thought we might go for a wee pictorial jaunt along Dunedin's Ophio River, perhaps better known to most of us as the Water of Leith. Our first stop is here, at Dunedin's first flour and sawmills, which were built on the banks of the Leith in 1850. They were established by William Valpy, who'd brought the machinery for the mills with him when he came out to Otago on the ship Ajax in 1849. But when this picture was painted by James Brown in 1852, the mills had been leased to Edward McGlashan. On the 4th of July 1871, a person living near the mill woke to find the building engulfed in flames, and soon it was reduced to ashes. But it was replaced by a larger stone mill shortly afterwards. The new mill was run by the Anderson family. Anderson's mill operated until January 1894, when it too was extensively damaged by fire. In 1859, another flour mill had been established downstream of McGlashan's. The portion of the water of Leith where it was located would soon also become known for breweries. Three were established here in 1862. This is one of them, the Well Park Brewery, which was alongside Duncan's flour mill. In the 20th century, this would become the place where Maltexo and later Wilson's whiskey were made. Here's another of those breweries established in 1862. Marshall and Copeland's Water of Leith Brewery was a mere stone's throw away from Duncan's Mill and the Well Park Brewery. When Marshall and Copeland moved in the early 1880s and new owners took over, the brewery expanded and became known as the Union Brewery. In the 1860s at Ross Creek, one of the main tributaries of the Water of Leith, two small dams were built to form the, the reservoir at the heart of New Zealand's first major urban water supply. Opening day for the water supply was the 9th of December 1867. A half day holiday was declared for the opening and nearly 400 people were thought to have trekked up to Ross Creek to watch the water officially being turned on. About 1875 or 76, James Davidson established a sawmill in the area. The mill was powered by a large wooden wheel that was over 10 metres in diameter. Water for driving the wheel was delivered via the flume you can see in this painting. Because it was built on a bend in the water of Leith, the mill was prone to flooding. It was not unusual to hear that the flume had been washed away yet again. A knockout blow was delivered by a particularly severe flood in 1923. Another record breaking flood in 1929 wreaked further havoc on the mill's remains. And in the 1930s, the buildings were demolished. A paper mill was established at Woodhaw around the same time as Davidson's sawmill. It was here in 1876 that Edward McGlashan produced the first machine-made paper in New Zealand. Although the paper mill was gutted by fire in 1911, it was rebuilt and paper continued to be made here until 1936. Other buildings constructed along the Leith in the 1870s have far outlived the sawmill and the paper mill. The most recognisable of these, of course, is the University of Otago's clock tower building. The Leith has long been a popular recreational destination too, as demonstrated by this painting, which is based on this 1860s photograph of a picnic at Woodhaw. In 1895, the City Council, picking up on a suggestion made by the City Engineer many years earlier, began developing part of Woodhaw as the public reserve today known as Woodhaw Gardens. 
Most of the time, the water of Leith is a fairly benign waterway. But there have been numerous times when it suddenly became a raging torrent. The most famous occasion was when an unnamed tropical cyclone struck in 1929. The resulting flooding, sometimes known as the Great Leith Flood of 1929, caused a considerable amount of damage and prompted significant widening and flood protection works to be undertaken along the Leith during the 1930s. That's it for today's episode. See you next time and thanks for watching.